Hey, what's happening there, everybody? My name is Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes. In today's video, I want to talk about the seven reasons why Gatsby JS rocks. In a previous video I did, which I'll put a link up in the top right and in the description below, I talked about the seven reasons why I left WordPress, and the last slide talked about Gatsby. And I couldn't let everybody just hang and say, well, what is Gatsby? So I decided to create this video of the seven reasons why Gatsby JS rocks. And with that, let's get started. All right, welcome back. Once again, my name is Hayden Anonymous with A Designer Who Codes, and this channel is all about improving your web design, but through code. And Gatsby JS really achieves everything I've ever wanted in terms of web design and development. It really has a great framework. And so I thought I'd make a little story about the seven reasons why Gatsby JS rocks from my point of view, coming from a web design, now a web developer. Number one, long initial setup, short deployment. So what do I mean by a long development setup? Well, it's not actually long, but there's a few steps at which to take. From transitioning from working just in WordPress and working with just CMS in terms of just that structure, I had to set up my own development environment. I couldn't just go out of the gate. And at first it was like, oh my gosh, this is a whole new world. This is like going on the moon for me. It wasn't easy, I admit it. And if you've ever experienced the first time into Gatsby, you're like, whoa, I like the gravity on Earth. I don't wanna to go to the moon. This is not where I want it to be. But the flip side is once you get going, it gets easier. So if you're new to Gatsby, you'll probably wanna head over to the tutorials and they have part zero, setting up your development environment. And it talks all about setting up Node.js for the first time. That for me was my very first time to use Node.js. I also installed Homebrew. This is the first time I've really delved into the terminal. This phrase that they put at the top, familiarize yourself with the command line is a very true statement. Here is what a command line looks like. At first I was like, well, <laughs> this isn't drag and drop. This is difficult for me. I was really struggling because I had to go through all these steps, install Xcode. I have used Xcode about five years ago, but I had to really install Xcode, install Node. Down below, I also had to, where is it? So eventually, Node.js, install Git. I've never used Git before. I was a late starter in the Git world. I was like, I don't need to use Git. And of course, now I love using Git. And it goes forward and goes forward, and now I created a Gatsby site. So the flip side is once you get down to this last step, this is all you have to do from there on out. So it's a short step process once you get started. All I really have to do is say, well, I'm gonna create a folder, change directory, I have a Gatsby demo projects folder. And all I really have to do here is say Gatsby new hello world. And if I copy this phrase and I paste it over here, this is how I build a website. I mean, literally all I had to do was once I had everything set up to go, it's now a short deployment. It's gonna install the files. Literally I'm running this live on the screen. And once I've set up my development environment, I'm done. So it does take a while, especially I say long because for the Mac users, Xcode is like seven gigs big. So it is not a fast installation in there. And I did screw up, I didn't type things right. It was a little bit of a bungly mess, I have to admit, because it was my first time. But after that, I was done. And to launch sites now, I literally have to type Gatsby new folder name, in this case it's hello world, and grab a GitHub. And for me, I also have my own starter little library that I use. I built my own template using the Gatsby starter default template and I involved the React Bootstrap framework. It just for me is the way I do things. It was easy to use, and I keep going back to the same style. So literally, this is all it takes to build a website. I'm letting it run, because I want to run this live, so I'm gonna keep talking. Please bear with me for watching this video, because I want to show you how long it took to run. It That was it. I can literally type in CD for change directory, and say hello world, and then type in Gatsby develop, and like magic, if I pull open my folder right here, I thought I had it open, but I guess I didn't. 
So here is my website. It's gonna do the Gatsby develop thing, which is pretty cool. There should be only one page, which is the index.js. And if I open it up in Visual Studio Code, we're done. My website, taking its sweet time, hello world. This is a functioning website. I change, I save, I'm done. To build, all I have to do is type in Gatsby build and like magic, it's gonna compile all of this code as in <laughs> all five lines of text and it's gonna spit out a website. And within minutes of me talking right here, as I'm doing it live on the screen, what I get as a result is a public folder that was built in 23 seconds. And if I go to the index page, there's my website. Like I literally built a website in about four minutes. I can't build that in HTML and CSS fast enough. So when I come to the phrase of long setup, short deployment, this is what I mean. The future usages of Gatsby are just that fast. Number two, real-time error messages. I'm not coming from a web development background. I got my bachelor's in fine arts. So for me, coding is still the secondary source to design with. I'm always thinking about line, shape, color, and now in the modern day web, responsive design, how does it fit on my computer, on a tablet, and a desktop. So even though I know how to write code pretty darn well, I still screw up quite a bit. Uh, it'll happen. I think one of my friends said that web development was 90% fixing and 10% building because you're almost gonna spend half your time debugging. And here's what I love about this. When I run my, I'm gonna say CMS, when I run my CLI or command line interface, it'll give me a green little area that says success for success. If I screw this up, and I say, you know what? Let's put this inside of an H1 tag. Let's make it really simple. And I type H1, and then I decide, you know what? I'm gonna change to an H2. So I have mismatching tags. If I save that, it real time says, hey, you kind of messed up. And it points me literally in the right direction. It literally says line five, character 38. So it shows me that this H1 tag is not closed properly. There is a problem. So if I go and fix it and I save, now it says success. This is underrated because to me, this can make a difference between my website working and not working. And if I build a website and I've got 800, 1000 lines of code, and I've written this traditional HTML or even PHP code, and I mess something up, I don't have an error message that says, hey, it's line five. That to me is great, and it gives me the error messages, literally expected corresponding JSX closing tag for H1. It literally tells me here is the problem, and this speeds my fixes up when I'm new, or even when I'm more advanced, I still make mistakes, and it literally tells me real time how to fix it. This to me is so fantastic. I save so many hours. So to me, real time error messages are fantastic. Number three, the GraphQL. And I put this in parentheses, once you get a hang of it. Let's talk about that and show it on screen. So when you start up Gatsby Develop, you are given two options just the local host for your website, but you also get graphical, an in-browser IDE to explore your site's data and schema. If I command click on this, what comes up is if I click on this, it's gonna give me a lot of error messages because I don't have my all Buzzsprout piece put in. But if I take that out and I say all file, edges, node, absolute path, and let me still get rid of this, and I click on this, what does this all mean? This doesn't make any sense. I don't know what's happening at first. This took a while to get used to because it's just a folder structure. But what it can do once you get used to it is pull data from anywhere. You can pull data from WordPress. Even though I say leave it, you can still use it as a CMS. 
I pull data from Buzzsprout, which is my podcast audio. I also use markdown files for this area. And once I got used to understanding how GraphQL works, and I've got other videos explaining it more in detail, this to me, it took like two months to get the hang of all this stuff. I didn't know what edges were, I didn't know what nodes were, absolute path. All of this at first was so cryptic because as a visual designer, this is not visual design. But once you get the hang of GraphQL, everything gets easier, including pulling any content from anywhere. So I do recommend if you are getting started in Graph or in, in Graph, in Gatsby, dive into GraphQL, break it, because you will see real-time error messages once you get used to how GraphQL works. But the implementation and integration into Gatsby is fantastic. And number four, Gatsby images. This is effing fast loading images, plain and simple. I didn't really rank these in order of importance, but this is probably my number one or number two reasons why I use Gatsby. For the longest time, I have loved loading large pictures on screen. And I have a website I built with this large picture. It's about 2000 pixels across. And this picture normally would just be a bear to load. And I know it's a little cached, but what you'll see here is it kind of goes blurry for half a second and then loads. That's because of Gatsby image. And what's great about it is, let me find the page. This first phrase sums up Gatsby image, speedy optimized images without the work. And they provide a demo. You can do blur up, which is what I used. I blurred it until it was ready to load. Background colors can come in until the picture's ready. Traced SVG, the newer format WebP format can also be utilized. It really lets you load large pictures fast. And especially when Google is now checking page speeds, this is just a game changer when you wanna load large images. And the picture I use right here is a large image. And if I scroll down, all these pictures load with Gatsby image. When I go to the Explore page, these pictures load with Gatsby image. I have implemented Gatsby image throughout my entire website. And you can see when the page loads that they kind of load in in that way. So they blur up. I actually use the trace SVG version in these pages and I use the blur up on this home page. Gatsby image, it's kind of like GraphQL because it does utilize GraphQL. It takes a little bit to get used to. And I have videos explaining how Gatsby image works. But once you understand how it works, you'll never go back and use another way again to load images when they're large on your website. And for number five, it's a two-parter. So 5.1, plugins made by Gatsby for Gatsby. Whenever you see a phrase in the library of Gatsby that says Gatsby dash, you know it's made by Gatsby. And that to me is a game changer because in the past when I worked in WordPress, you had every single plugin known to man not made by WordPress. And so you had a third party software, which is WordPress, used by a third party software developer in the plugin world. And to me, I never knew if they truly worked. All the core plugins Gatsby has. And so you can find a plethora of them inside of the Gatsby plugin directory by searching for all the Gatsby plugins. And 5.2 is third party reliable plugins. So much so is that I was working in a Buzzsprout plugin and I had an error message and it just kept throwing me problems. I reached out on Twitter not knowing if they were gonna respond back but one of the developers that built the plugin sent me back React code. And it turns out it was not a bug, but a user error, AKA me. And he showed me things in GraphQL as we went in before why GraphQL works. And he goes, hey, change this from public to private. And I did that and in my filter of GraphQL, it worked. So when I say third-party reliable plugins, it went a step further and the developer of the plugin even reached out to me or reached back to me on Twitter to help solve a problem. I've never experienced that before in the WordPress world, but I experienced that in the React slash Gatsby plugin development world. And that to me was just 
amazing. Number six, choose your own CMS. This was also big to me because in WordPress, it was really, I had a choice of WordPress, WordPress, or WordPress. Now in number six, I get a choice of so many CMSs. I am a fan of Netlify CMS. I know people that like to use Strapi. There is also Sanity.io. All these different frameworks work with Gatsby JS. And so you can use your own content management system to integrate into Gatsby. And so you're not locked into only WordPress and only MySQL. You get a choice and you can even use WordPress as your CMS. Gatsby and WordPress have an integrated plugin that Gatsby builds. Again, going back to number 5.1, Gatsby builds the plugin so you can actually use WordPress on your own server to host your content to pull into Gatsby. That just was mind blowing that I can choose not only any CMS, but WordPress as well. Game changer. And number seven was deployment easiness. I primarily deploy my files either to Google Firebase or to Netlify. And Google, Google, Gatsby, a lot of G words. Gatsby says, get familiar with the command line interface and wow, have I. But it's actually been much easier because Gatsby builds static files or a static site generator or SSG, I don't have to rely upon my SQL to make my site run. When Gatsby pulls all the information from GraphQL, from anywhere else, from WordPress, I like to use Netlify CMS, it builds static sites. So I don't have to worry about an extra server running a server, if, <laughs> or a, not a server, but a database. So what I have to do is either use, I like to, again, I like to use Google Firebase or Netlify, and all it takes, especially with Google, is typing Firebase deploy and the site goes up. I can drag and drop in Netlify. It's just so easy to launch my site. In the past with FTP or SFTP, I dragged and dropped and then a file might not push or I had to put a certain folder and it, it was just more of a headache than I realized. So Gatsby allows me to deploy my sites wherever I want. I can use the traditional hosting companies, but I can also use modern day frameworks. And if you wanna go the AWS route, go for it. You can use Amazon Web Services. The world is your oyster to where you can deploy your sites and it makes it so easy to do so once you build your static sites in Gatsby. So these are my seven reasons why I love Gatsby, but I'm curious, what do you love about Gatsby? Is there something that you really especially just can't live without in their framework? Is there something I miss that I also should add to my list of maybe seven plus? If so, shoot me a comment down below. As always, I'm Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes. Ready to continue becoming a better web designer through code? Check out more of my videos through my channel, A Designer Who Codes. Thanks so much for watching.